We've created this short video specifically to go over the details of how to tie a square knot, since it is a major source of confusion and challenge for the novice surgeon. Compared to the half hitch slip knot, the square knot is a more difficult knot to tie for two reasons. First, the knot must be laid down with the sutures pulled in equal and opposite direction, or else it will tumble on its side turning into a half hitch slip knot. The second reason why square knots are more difficult is that there is a specific sequence and directionality to forming the knots and crossing them that is dependent on how you start. Not following the sequence will result either in an inadvertent slip knot or a granny knot. This video will show you the four common permutations that can be used to tie square knots using the two-handed technique and explain why two of these four should not be used in the operating room. The first variation starts with the sutures crossed, a common practice used to avoid having to cross your hands when laying down the first knot. In this case, the tail of the suture, the end that is being flipped through the loop, is in the front, which requires us to form the knot by leading with the thumb. First knot is laid down flat without crossing, and then the second knot is formed by alternating leading with the forefinger and the tail end of the suture is crossed in front of the knot. Although you will successfully tie a square knot following these steps, you will more likely than not be criticized and corrected if you use this specific variation. The two overriding principles in the operating room are economy of motion and for trainees, transparency of action. The latter is important for supervising surgeons to ensure patient safety and monitor performance. This means that the trainee should avoid blocking the view of the operative field. The second permutation of a two-handed square knot starts again with the sutures crossed, but the tail end is in the back so that the first knot is formed by leading with the forefinger and is laid down flat without crossing. The second knot is formed by leading with a thumb and the tail is crossed behind the knot. You will notice that in addition to the knot being visible, crossing behind the knot is more comfortable and ergonomic. The next two permutations start with the threads uncrossed. This situation can arise either from the surgeon's preference or because a needle may be still attached to one end of the suture making it less convenient to cross the threads. When the threads are uncrossed at the start, you have to cross your hand on the first knot. When the index finger is used to form the knot, the hand will cross in the front. As explained above, this particular variation is not recommended due to the fact that the hands are crossing in the front and obscuring the view of the knot. So the preferred way to start a square knot when the threads are uncrossed is to lead on the first knot with your thumb. This way, you will cross behind the knot on your first throw, and then as always, alternate leading with the forefinger when forming the second knot. So in summary, develop a routine and a habit of starting square knots in the two ways described that lead to crossing your tail behind the knot. I would like to add one additional wrinkle to this skill, and that is how to salvage a situation if you start it in a way that requires you to cross in front of the knot. And that is to simply lay down the knot using the post rather than the tail. We don't recommend routinely using this technique as it can be less than optimal when tying at depth. As an assignment, you should also practice and discover for yourself the analogous starting positions for one-handed square knots. Before we conclude, we should go over the two techniques to maximize economy of motion and avoid an exaggerated crossing motion that is frowned upon by most supervising surgeons. First is to pull the sutures in the vertical axis so that the hands do not cross the midline. This can be effective as long as the natural lay of the knot is in this direction. However, if you force this twist on a knot that wants to lie horizontally, it can easily tumble into a half hitch. The second technique is to use the tips 
of your index finger to create an even and opposite pull. This allows the post to be more diagonal and creates a more compact and natural position. However, the more vertical the post is, the easier it is for the knot to inadvertently tumble. In concluding, I would like to emphasize that the square knot can be an unstable knot that requires particular effort to tie well. In the operating room, it is often a balance between kinesthetics and the quality of the final product.